scary story slash urban legend thread, here is one that happened to me a few months back. But I want to stress that you can literally google this instant if you want proof. Although the articles I've been reading have been highly sanitized, which is part of the reason I am posting this. Be me, South African, going on a trip to Botswana. My sister is marrying a guy who's a game ranger, and I'm going on this trip to spend time with the dude and get to know him. I'm supposed to be the best man at the wedding, even though we barely know each other. I arrive after a really long drive, spend the first day drinking and driving dirt bikes around, generally having a great time. Next day, sister's fiance suggests we go driving around the outskirts of the Okavango Delta in an attempt to see some wildlife. I agree. We go driving around and manage to spot some giraffes, leopard, hippos, and some different birds. Really fun, but insanely fucking hot. No elephants spotted. This comes up later. Eventually, we head back to the place we're staying at each night. We start to cook and drink. Sister's fiance, I'll just call him John, gets a call as the sun's going down. I notice how weirded out he is by what he's being told on the phone. He hangs up, but definitely seems freaked out as we eat dinner. I ask him what's up, but John just dismisses it. Says it's nothing serious. After dinner, we start drinking more and more. John starts ranting about his boss. And that's who was on the phone. Says they found some dead elephants, and he wants John to go check it out. John tells him it's too dark to see anything, but he'll go tomorrow. John apologizes to me, tells me he'll be busy working tomorrow. I say, it's no problem. John, kinda drunk, feels really bad, says we're supposed to be bonding, but now he's leaving me in a shitty little chalet with no company. Night goes on. After a few more beers, John tells me that I should come with him tomorrow. I'm reluctant. I don't love the idea of inspecting dead elephants. John insists. Says they'll go by helicopter. Says it'll be much better than driving in the heat. I agree to go along. Next day, we eat breakfast and head to a small airstrip. Helicopter looks rickety as fuck, but I feel like complaining would just be rude. There are a lot of pre-flight procedures and we end up taking off just after midday. We fly around for about an hour, able to search a huge amount of area really quickly. There's me, John, another ranger, a dude who I think was a ranger in training, and the pilot. John and the other ranger have trank rifles ready in case they need to inspect a live elephant up close. Finally, spot something about three elephants lying in the sun. We land a few meters away and hop out. The stench is horrible. Flies are everywhere. The corpses are half rotten and half eaten. I think it's weird that three elephants are dead together, but not too shocking beyond that. Jean and the others are discussing something. Conversation seemed pretty intense. I try to join the conversation so I don't seem like the silent autist of the group, lurking in the background. Uh, so I'm guessing some poachers shot them, huh? Everyone looks at me and they all seem annoyed. I think they were pissed that John invited a normie who didn't know shit along with them. Eventually, John says, Doesn't seem like poachers. The elephants still have their tusks. I hadn't thought of that and now I feel like a dumbass. They keep inspecting the bodies, and both rangers seem really interested in one of the smaller ones. It was lying on its side, but its face was pointed at an odd angle towards the ground, like it had been trying to stick its head in the ground. Finally, the other ranger suggests we keep looking to see if there are any others. We get back up in the air and fly around for about another hour. Ranger seems really troubled, but we see nothing. We land and they have another conversation about what to do next while I just sit awkwardly in the helicopter with my feet hanging out. We have some lunch and John informs me that we're going to do one more search before heading back as we only have enough fuel for about another hour. 
We were flying back and forth, so we were only about 45 minutes away from the airstrip. Before we finish eating, I overhear the ranger tell John that the smaller elephant really seemed like it had a broken neck. I blurt out, how the fuck does that happen? Ranger just glares at me and keeps eating. We finish eating and take off again and continue searching. After about 30 minutes, the pilot tells us we're heading back and turns home. But after just five minutes, the ranger in training starts pointing and shouting. Lying on the ground near a clearing of trees are about a dozen dead elephants. The sun's going down and the shadows from their corpses are easy to see stretching along the ground. We land nearby and make our way over. Smell is even worse than last time and the bodies are ruined. I'm not much of a nature lover, so I don't know exactly what animals can do to other animals. Even so, I could tell some bodies had been picked at by scavengers. Their stomachs were torn open, and intestines spewed out everywhere. I asked John if maybe somebody had shot at them just for the fuck of it. He says, probably not. To kill this many, you'd need a helicopter to fire from above, and when that happens, like when they're tranked, they form a circle around the younger ones. But these bodies were all spread out over the distance of a kilometer or two, like they had been running away in a full-on panic. He then pointed out the state of some other bodies. A couple had feet and legs missing, which may be possible after being chewed on for a few days. But I can't imagine why some lions and hyenas would go for the legs and feet first while leaving the stomach untouched. After some inspecting, we all end up standing around the body of a smaller elephant, maybe a teenager who was missing its head. I don't mean its skin and flesh had been picked off by birds and wild dogs. I mean its head, neck, and right shoulder were gone, like they had been pulled off. Also, while this body was smaller, it was still probably a couple of tons, and twice the height of a human. I actually wondered if someone had magically fed this thing a stick of dynamite or something. At this point, John and the other ranger are swearing and ranting about how fucked this all is, but I think the rest of us all knew that they were using anger to cover up their growing confusion and worry. After I let them vent a little, I asked, what do we do now? The other ranger snaps at me and says, we're going to go home and try to figure out how to explain this to the Department of Environmental Affairs. We all start to head back to the helicopter when the ranger in training says, What about the hole? We all turn and look at him, and John says, What hole? The ranger in training starts leading us towards a small hill while saying, I thought you all saw it when we flew overhead. Sure enough, there in the side of this hill is a hole dug at maybe a 15 or 20 degree angle downwards. This thing is fucking massive. It looks like a mole's hill, except it's as big as a subway tunnel. I ask John what I'm looking at, still thinking this is some natural phenomena I've never heard about, but he just mumbles that he has no idea. Finally, the pilot asks if we're going in. What the fuck? Dot JPEG. What did this man just say? I just look at him like he's a fucking crazy person. Why the fuck would we go in there? Luckily, the other ranger says, Nah, it's almost dark. Let's just take some pictures and get back. We'll report this and let someone else figure it out. I'm beginning to like this dude. We start walking back. The pilot and I take our time checking the bodies some more, because the other three are taking pictures, and there's no hurry. Although I did feel really creeped out, I didn't say anything. Eventually, we all end up in the helicopter, except for the ranger who has climbed up a body and is taking his last pictures. For some reason, I only noticed then how silent it was. No animals except for flies, which I thought was weird, considering how much raw meat was present. As the ranger jumps off the body and starts heading back, we all hear a massive grating noise sounded like something huge was shifting against the sand. I immediately assume one of the elephants is still alive and trying to stand up. We all pile out of the helicopter and make our way towards the noise. I can't see anything because the light's fading fast and the horizon is dotted with giant elephant carcasses. 
I notice John and the others making their way up some bodies, and I jump onto a nearby fairly intact corpse to get a vantage point. As I crest the elephant, never thought I'd type that sentence, I stare out at the black silhouettes lying on the ground against the afternoon sky. For a while, I see nothing, but suddenly, my eyes pick up movement. At first, I think it's something coming out of the hole, like a fucking worm from Dune or something, and I tactically shit my pants. But then I notice that it seems to be an elephant, trying to drag itself into the hole. John and the other ranger are already down the carcasses and heading for the hole and the rest of us are following. I'm not sure why. Maybe we just wanted to see a living elephant after all these dead ones. I won't pretend it was rational and I can't speak for the others, but I just felt like if we saw this thing up close, we might be able to get some understanding of what happened here. We all come around to the side of a truly massive dead elephant and stare towards the entrance of the hole. At this point, the light was dying fast and a lot of the detail was lost in the shadow of the tunnel, but I swear to god, I saw enough to know I wasn't imagining anything. Standing at the entrance to the hole is a person, crouched over like a gorilla. The hair was long and matted, and they were completely naked. But the real problem was their size. This person was crouched over the elephant. Their body was actually slightly cramped in the subway-sized hole. The elephant's body looked like a big gray dog next to this literal giant. Its proportions were completely fucked. Its top half was stretched out and spidery, with arms as long as a truck, folded so that it could fit inside the tunnel, ending in these wiry fingers with needle-like claws. Meanwhile, its bottom half was stubby and emaciated. This thing's legs were human enough in appearance, though each was the size of a fully grown man. But they were so withered compared to the rest of it that they almost seemed vestigial. We came to see it just as it was getting back into the tunnel. What had seemed like an elephant crawling into the hole had actually been an elephant's body being dragged by the leg into the earth. We all stood in abject horror as this thing pulled at the elephant's corpse like a sack of potatoes. We hadn't made a sound, but at some point it turned its head around, not like it heard something, but rather like it was a wild animal, checking its surroundings from time to time. Its eyes immediately snapped towards us. This thing's face was so fucked up. The eyes were white and milky, but I could still tell that it saw us. The nose was upturned like a bat, and its mouth hung slightly open as it breathed, revealing massive slab-like teeth, like something you'd see in a hippo's mouth. They were all crooked, and some protruded out at odd angles, but they all looked as hard as steel, and I could immediately imagine them tearing through the legs and heads of the bodies we'd seen so far. The strangest part was the shape of its head. It seemed disfigured and bulbous, like a fetus's skull. It also bent in on one side more than the other. The best way I can describe it is like the lady from the painting in It except wider and obviously far larger. The skin was veiny, and although its shoulders and back were covered in dirt, it seemed as white as a sheet. Almost to the point of being translucent, the skin around its eyes had enough wrinkles to act like eyebrows which gave it a very surprised, slightly confused look. After a split second of confusion, this thing's face contorts into a look of absolute rage. It lets out this awful fucking roar. Sounds almost like the scream a deaf person might make. Sort of low and monotone, but it's loud enough that my hands instinctively slam into my ears to try to block out the sound. We all start spraying towards the helicopter. John's shouting something, but my ears are ringing, and it's too muffled to make out. We all climb into the helicopter in complete terror. I strap myself in and look back towards the hole. This giant fucking monster is clawing its way towards us. It's clearly moving as fast as it can, but it's still pretty slow. Its back legs are dragging along limply, 
and it's only moving by clawing at the ground and elephant corpses. It moves like someone who's paralyzed from the waist down. We all just sit there, petrified, and stare at it while the pilot starts a helicopter. I remember watching it grab at one of the larger elephants to try to use as an anchor to pull itself along. The elephant corpse literally slid towards it, like a fucking elephant corpse wasn't heavy enough for it to use as a weight. The helicopter starts to lift off, and this thing reaches out for us. It's still a long ways off, but it came a hell of a lot closer than I would have thought possible. Its whole body is probably longer than two school buses placed end to end. The ranger fires his shrink gun at it, but I honestly didn't even see it hit or not, although I'd be amazed if he missed that thing. We don't stay around. The pilot turns the helicopter towards home, and we shoot back faster than I thought possible. I think I heard another dull roar as we flew away, but my ears were still ringing too much to be certain. Rest of the night was a blur. I don't remember much of the conversations after we landed, but I wasn't content with being back at the chalet. I just felt like the thing was still crawling towards us in the night and would eventually smash through the little wooden chalet I was in. I told John I was leaving right away, and drove for another six hours before pulling into a petrol station and falling asleep in my car. When I woke up the next morning, I kept driving until I got home. I got in the shower and just stood there under the water for about an hour. Eventually, I called John, and we spoke for a while about everything that happened. Apparently, they got a massive group together to go search the area, but when they arrived, they only found eight bodies, and the hole had partially collapsed. Over the next few weeks, Jean told me about the attempts to track down whatever the thing was, but eventually they gave up, and some of the other rangers started to think that maybe we all just had a few too many beers and came up with this shit. Apparently, he had quite a few arguments over what happened that night. Elephant corpses keep showing up near those holes, but nobody's willing to go walking into them to see what's inside. After another two weeks, John quit that job, and now he's working as a delivery man. You're probably wondering why you haven't heard about this. Well, you can find some stories about it, but most of them attribute the deaths to some kind of pandemic that spread through the population. You'll also notice they omit most of the pictures. They'll only show you pictures of the most intact elephants, so you don't wonder how such massive creatures can get pulled limb from limb and they'll never show you the holes dug in and out of the ground. Here's an article in case you're interested.